Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today we're doing a flirred gate, sheep and cattle. And what we've got here, uh, we've got our gate post, which is a one-inch rod. And so what we've done, this is all high tensile, by the way, uh, power fed. We've got a uh, piece down here, and uh, Ben found me a rock out of the creek a while ago to keep this from settling down in the dirt. So we've got a one-inch rod. We've drilled a quarter-inch hole through there. And this is the uh, PowerFlex quarter inch rope. It's got uh, 22 steel filaments in it. It is conductive. Very, very durable. I used to use tape. Uh, ben, have you got that tape? Yeah. Um, matter of fact, we took down a tape wire here. It just had one single wire on it. This is the tape. And this is fine uh, for creek crossings uh, where you might get some damage or the creek might take it. I don't like using rope down the creek because it's too valuable. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more pricey too. So uh, this is our sheep wire, 10 and a half inches. And then up here, we got one at 29 and a half. And Isaac, show them how we open and close that gate real quick. So when you go to open it, there's obviously tension. You just push back, lift this little thing up and take it out of the slot. Okay, down take it out of what slot? Oh, this, down there. This guy. Yep. Okay. And you put it back in, you put your bottom in. Take this guy, put it over. Put it back on there. And you're good. Okay. What's that wire going off in the brush over there? Why did we do that for? That's so this post we've got bracing it. It's okay. kind of flimsy. Yep. So we've got a what, what would you call it? That's a dead man over dead there. Dead man over yep. tied it or with a what is it, six foot? That's a six foot rod drove, drove in the ground. ground. Yep. And what's this thing right here? This is our switch. This is what allows us to touch it without feeling it. Except for that one. <laughs> Except for this one, yeah. yeah. Greg so, got lucky a little bit ago. He jumped over and he touched it, and it, it wasn't the spark, so he, he made it. Um, ben and Isaac actually climbed up in this sycamore tree, and between the two of them, they were actually able to... We had a, a feeder wire up here in the air. There it is. And they made that connection up there. They just crimped on. I wanted to get this wire high enough that the landowner... If he ever brings a tractor down, or if I ever try and brush all down here, I don't clip the top of my tractor. So we got it. Shoot. Well, I can't reach it. Yeah, Ben's six foot seven, and he can't reach it. He's a foot a foot from touching it. So we're good on that for clearance. So here's the poly, the poly rope, and we're going to show you our knot. So we've, we've got the wire. Or I'm sorry, the rope through the hole. He's going to go around it, and now he's going to tie the slip knot. Folks, the reason you want to tie a slip knot in there is uh, if your wire or this uh, poly rope ever gets loose, all you've got to do is undo that slip knot and retie it. Oh, yeah. Good. Y'all don't know if that's the first time Isaac's ever done that with rope. Good job, Isaac. Ben's on the, he's on for the next knot. Okay, Ben, you want to do this one? So Ben's going to tie, now this is actually going to be a knot on this end. Now folks, before he ties that on, this is our flurred, our sheep and our cattle fence. It's going, how far up through there, you guys? Uh, half a mile? Half a mile, Probably. yeah. It's a long ways. It's a That's long ways. That's we've been working on. Yeah, it's a long ways. Two wire fence, beautiful timeless fence post and all that. But here we drove a, a inch and a quarter solid fiberglass rod. It's in the ground about five feet. So we left about two and a half feet, three foot sticking out. And what we did is when I made the, the dead end here, I, I did my little hangman's knot there on the end where the boys did that one. Uh, leave it long enough tail that you can come out here like this. Okay. And then you use one of these opened in crimps. Would you all get that box open in crimps? Yep. I'm going to show you all what an open in crimp looks like in the crimper tool. So we took the open end crimp and uh, we put that on this wire right here and we made the loop and this is what an open end crimp looks like. So you can run, the beautiful thing about these is, is you can grab a hold of a piece of wire like that. Okay, well shoot, there we go. <laughs> there, go on like that. And there's the other piece that you crimp to that other open slot. That's what they call it, an open slot crimp. These are also, uh, I get those from PowerFlex. These are crimpers. <laughs> and there's the crimpers. 
This is the big, the open end ones. Show, put that in there. Show them how that works. So that yeah. goes in there like so. There you go. And then you, obviously I'm not going to crimp it, but. Right. You don't want to crimp it, but there, there you go. So there's your two holes. And when he closes that, tell you what, I'm going to sacrifice that crimp. Go ahead and close it. Just on. Just close it on itself. You see what happens. Watch this. Okay. So what it did is it closed both of those holes onto your high tensile wire and it actually made a good seal. Good job. I'll take it from there. All right. And that one's aluminum? This is aluminum. This is not steel. This is aluminum. Steel right here. These right here, yeah. yeah you got the, them over there. This is the, what they call the C23 crimp. That's steel one right there. That's what made our connection from one wire to the next. And so Ben and Isaac ran a wire over the top. We went clear up here on top. That's a foam-filled fiberglass post. You can use a PVC. Bring it down the post, all the way down, and Isaac and Ben put a crimp on it right here on each one. So there's no way that that overhead wire is going to come off there. It's fastened. It's all one continuous loop. Well, why did we put these loops on here? I'm going to show you why. Ben, go ahead and put your knot on there. So Ben's going to do a knot, and he's going to pull it up tight. Look at that. Let me get over here, Ben, on the other side. Watch this. So watch this wire. So go ahead, Ben. So he's got it tight. Look at that. Folks, that's fiddle string tight. And now he's just going to keep wrapping it around that hook and wrapping it, holding it tight, making sure he doesn't lose his tightness. There you go. And you keep doing that until you're right there. Now, Ben's got enough to make at least two good knots right here on this end without losing his tightness. He's not going to lose his tightness. Got to get all that slack out of it. There you go. There you go. Now, do one more right on top of that. Man, that is a beautiful looking. That's beautiful. Folks, there's no sheep in the world going to... Well, <laughs> our, I shouldn't say there's no sheep... Our sheep, our sheep won't go through that. Believe it or not, that'll hold our, our, our cow herd too. One wire, uh, 10 and a half inches off the ground. But we're going to put in another one. And this one is uh, going to go across the top. And I'm going to leave the boys with that one. We're going to come back and check on them in a minute. We'll open and shut this gate. But I'm going to take off and show you all this fence and how we did this creek crossing. It's a, it's a trick over there. Yeah. Just don't step on the bees. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the bumblebees. We were driving a postal the other day, and Isaac was standing on a whole nest of bumblebees as he drove that post in, and I just heard this roar coming out of the ground. And we all backed up, and uh, we got our post driven, and we got the fence in, and then we got out of there. And we did not get, we didn't get stung. Um, one of the things that helped us was they were not ground bees, they were bumblebees. Ground bees, we'd have been in deep, deep doo-doo. Okay, there's our uh, daisy tensioners. Because we actually pulled from the corner they're working on there. We're coming down here to this creek. Watch this. So we get to the creek. We're going to drop over this bank, and it's steep. I mean, it's eight or nine feet down. And we drove another fiberglass rod there. If you don't have fiberglass, just use a wood post. Or steel, if you use steel, make sure you use a darn good insulator because that's a, that's a ground rod. Uh, but this is uh, our timeless. I love those posts. I mean, that thing's got some tension on it. It's taking it. Unbelievable. Those are the best darn posts there is. I love timeless posts. And uh, I don't know where else you can get a post that's got a lifetime, or not a lifetime, a 20 year warning on it. It's pre drilled. And you don't have to paint it. <laughs> Post that up. Whoa, I'm almost on those bumblebees. Those bumblebees, folks, are right here by my feet. Oh, here they go. Here. I'm going to get out of here. They're right, they're right there. I can hear them. Anyway, I'm going to get out of the bumblebees. Oh, get out of here, girl. Okay. So we made it to the creek. Here's the creek. There's an old crossing that the previous landowner had in it. You see how well that worked. Didn't work worth a flip. Uh, the creek ripped the tires out. Anyway, 
this is going to work. So what we've got is another uh, corner post driven right there. This is our power source coming across the top of the creek where the water can't get it. So it's, you know, from the creek to the bottom, that's probably 10, 12 feet. Water will not get up that high. And then all we have here is a piece of tape. Look at this. I can't believe I was over here a while ago. I put that on there. I put that on there. And uh, I was, my foot was right there by the bees. There's the bees. Ah, oh, my heart's still pounding over that one. So we've got a, a, a uh, handle here that's non-conductive. And all I did is I wrapped it. Okay, I wrapped it around there. And that gives you a way to power it up. On the other end, I'll show you, we just actually tied on cold on the other side. And then we did our, our nice little uh, crossing. So these are fiberglass rods. These are 5 eighths diameter. Okay. But, we get, ouch, get down in the creek, ouch. Pretty good dip off of there. Pull this out of the way so you can see. So this is tape. This is a poly tape. And we've got two hooks on there. We've got one for the sheep and one up here for the cattle. So 10 and a half, 29. It's coming down right into the creek. Okay, creek's flowing. Got a little bit of, well, you can see it's got a little bit of riffle right there. Uh, we've been having some beautiful, gorgeous rains, and we are so thankful. And my heart goes out to those folks that are in a drought. It is not fun. I have been there. Okay. So now we've got the wire across the creek. And uh, all these posts, there's one there. There's one right in the middle of the creek. And you notice the posts are driven at an angle. So when brush comes down through there, the brush can, of course, take that tape out if it's here. But when we leave the farm, we just roll the tape up and set it up on the hill up here where the rain can't get it or the flood and the flood does they will not take those posts out they're in the ground uh about six feet okay they're they're driven in there deep you can see them so we're going to be turning the flood in here in about 30 minutes and uh, we just finished our fence we're really tickled with it and uh on this side of course there's our, what's left on the spinning jenny so i tied on cold right there it's not touching anything. And this is our feeder wire coming up, going across the creek. How cool is that? So there's our flirt, our flirt fence. We got the top and the bottom on the timeless post. These are four foot timeless posts. They're already pre-drilled. Uh, this is the inch and a half model. Very durable post. Stout. We're driving these in the woods, folks. There's roots around here. Uh, there's rocks. Doesn't matter. They bust through it. It's just unbelievable. You use a standard T-post driver to drive them. Now, here's one. So, we've got a low spot here. This is a swag, okay? What do you do on that? Do you want to pull your wire? So, this is our, right here. That is our uh, flirt wire. I'm not going to pull that flirt wire down in that draw then come back up i go across the top of the draw then when i'm done i come back and i get another piece of hot tinsel wire i take that open tap crimp which is right there okay and i run it through my pre-drilled hole on the timeless post which is right there that is ten and a half inches come up here with a pair of pliers and i pull on that and there's another one of those open tap crimps I pull that up tight. Look how tight that is. That's hand pulled. And then I had uh, Isaac or Ben, one of the two, crimp that while I was pulling on it. Isn't that cool? All oh, this is so simple. I mean, we built this fence. It's a half mile. It took us more. It took us more time to clear the brush and get the trees out of the way and run a weed eater down through here, a brush eater, than it did actually almost to build the fence. But it goes way up through there. The bulls and sheep are going to clean this up. We've never had sheep down in this. They are going to do donut. They're going to they're going to flip out down here. All these vines and good-looking brushy things. 
but there's there's another one of those uh, corners um we are gonna have some uh two and a half inch foam fill which do the same thing as those we're hoping to have some of those in within the next couple months uh those that one right there is an eight footer folks um it's driven in the ground five feet and i mean there is some tension on there i mean it's just like a tree though i mean feel that wire it's just unbelievable that's a darn good looking fence I'll show you another spot up here we did now this was a longer uh, low spot and i was concerned about what well, it is it's a little creek and uh actually it's a big ravine it's, i will i won't call it a creek it kind of looks like a little tree too so this is our flood uh this brush pile was put in here uh, 20 years ago and this is the debris that's built up in 20 years so there's some there's some water coming down this little branch so I didn't want my high tensile wire, the, 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 you might say the third, the flared wire on the bottom to be pulled down. So again, we just crimped on right here. This is a long gap. So we went all the way clear up this hill and there it is. Look how tight that bottom wire is. Though. See, there's not going to be anything come down through and take that out. There's not enough water flow to to carry a big log down this branch. If there's big logs in here, I wouldn't do that. I'd use that tape. So that tape will break before it takes out your fence. But I'm telling you, this made a... This is something we did and just, you know, we come over here and work a couple hours. And we're, we've done this like three or four days. We're done. Folks, you can put in a lot of fence with high tensile wire and timeless posts. And that, that's your biggest work is getting, once you get your post driven in, okay, your work's done. And you know what? Look at that. <laughs> your holes are already drilled. Posts are already painted. You don't have to go back and paint anything. Anyway. Now, we're going to have to come back and paint these fiberglass posts. Because those will fray out and they'll get fuzzy if you don't put paint on them. But we don't paint them until we drive them, and the big ones. Because all you're going to do is scrape the paint off of them with your driver. And here, we come out there and just wipe that rod down, sandpaper, then take an acetone rag, wipe the dust off, and you paint it with XO Rust-Oleum enamel, not latex, enamel, 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 enamel. <laughs> we had an intern painted a bunch of them. She went home and painted them, and she forgot the enamel part. She used latex, and... Um, they all shed their skins like snakes. Enamel. Do not use latex. But I'll tell you what, everybody talks about, you know, post costs. Well, folks, that post right there next to that next one, that's 20 some feet. A steel post is gonna cost you 550 for a six and a half footer. Heck, that's, those four foot uh, times didn't cost me that. And I got them, you know, 20 feet apart. And does that fence look like it's sagging to you? Absolutely not. What if that tree right there, lightning storm comes and hits it and it falls on my fence? What am I going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my chainsaw and cut it off. I'm going to go back to the truck. I'm done. There is no re-stretching of the fence. That fence will pop right back up. It's going to be just as tight as it was before you cut the tree off. And that's the beautiful thing about high tensile. Any kind of lamb, anything that falls on it, it just, it doesn't take your fence out. Just cut it off and it pops back up. And we do not use springs. On This is a long run. It's a half a mile long. So there's, I don't know, 2,500 feet from one end to the other, or 2,600, whatever it is. And uh, there's enough stretch in that high tensile. You don't need to put springs in there. Now, if you're only going 100 feet, one corner post to the next corner post, and you're expecting something to fall on that, you might put a spring on it because there's not going to be any give. You'll probably break your high tensile. Okay. But this is unbelievable, beautiful fence. I can't wait to get the cattle in here. And we built it back in the woods like this to keep the uh, sun off of it so it doesn't grow out. And uh, we're, we're pretty happy about that. And the boys have got the top wire done. I can tell they're waiting on me. They're patiently waiting on me. Y'all get her done? Yeah, we're good. Ready to make her hot? 
I'm ready to make it hot. Why don't you go grab that uh, tester out of the... I want to see what our new wire fence does when we energize it. We haven't had any power on this thing, folks. I think, ben, is it going to be hot? Brand new. What do you I think? Just, it's, I don't know. Are you betting? I'll, I'll bet it's hot. You'll bet it's hot? Okay. Because that charge up a crane is hot. <laughs> Why don't you pull that spinning jenny just a little bit? That's a pretty good ground rod right there. There, that's good. <laughs> Folks, does that look like that they haven't stopped a bolt? Probably not. Most bolts, but it'll stop ours. They're scared to death of wire. And uh, so we're getting ready to power this up. I'm going to guess it's going to be pretty warm. When we come back down here, we're going to have to be a little bit more careful. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to let one of you all tighten that up. No, that's, that's good. It's tight. I got it tight that time. Okay. Y'all have to excuse me. I'm trying to climb this hill. I need Isaac. Give you a push. Give me a push in the butt. There we go. That sucker's steep. Okay. Now for the moment of truth. All of our work is it going to be worth it? I think it will. Our flurred fence is almost operational. Oh yeah, y'all did a good job on it. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so they got the top wire on. Now I want you to open that gate. Show them how it, Show works. Them how it works. That's our poly rope gate. Let you through. Now, uh, are you going to touch that rope when you got it open? I'll do it right now. <laughs> not, not when it's open. Not when it's hot. This is hot. Yeah. yeah. So, folks, that is a hot gate now. It will be as soon as they close that switch. So, when you open the darn thing, don't reach down and grab that poly rope. It'll knock you in the next week. That's where I get shocked the most. I always have my hand, like, right here. Yep. Just barely touching it. Yep. Okay. There you go. Step back on it. Are you make her hot? Yes. Powered up. Let's see what we got. Okay. Now, we're going to put the... Uh, meter right here on our new wire let's see the moment oh, of truth oh man <laughs> oh my gosh 73 7400 7400 volts and there's zero zero amps that means there's no load on that fence anywhere which is should shouldn't be because yeah. we just built it it's brand new there's nothing touching it but that's one hot fence folks you do not want to touch that it will ruin your whole day. It absolutely will. And it'll ruin an animal's day when they touch it. That's why it works so well. All right, so we're powered up. And we're going to go bring the Florida in here. And everyone, this is Greg Judy signing off. And uh, everyone will see you all down the road. Hit that subscribe button on the way out.